Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Josh and in today's video, I'll be going over eBoss Group Limited, stock ticker EBO, both listed on the NZX as well as the ASX. So this stock was a really hot pick for the brokers competition in 2021. Essentially, this competition is a bunch of brokers coming together and giving their top five picks that they think will do the best in 2021. I've covered those picks in the video above, but basically in that video, I say that four out of six brokers had picked eBoss Group in their top five picks. Let's have a look today to see if eBoss Group is gonna live up to the hype that these brokers did bring to the stock. All right, so in today's video, I'll be going over eBoss Group Limited. I'll be going through the business as well as some valuation metrics of the business to see whether it's worthwhile considering to buy eBoss Group in 2021. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit like and subscribe. And as always, this is not financial advice purely for entertainment purposes only. You can read the full disclaimer in the video description down below. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. eBoss Group Limited, EBO NZE currently trading at $28.75 New Zealand and um, it's up 19.29% in the past year. So eBoss Group is the largest and most diversified Australian marketer, wholesaler and distributor of healthcare medical and pharmaceutical products. Now eBoss Group operates in two different industries, the healthcare as well as the animal care industry. Healthcare makes up the majority of their revenues, making up roughly 95% of total revenues. And then the other 5% is pet care, which turn over roughly 425 million AUD. So for the purposes of this video, I will analyze everything in AUD because that is the numbers that uh, management use in their financial results and financial presentations. On a gross operating revenue basis, animal care makes up 13% of that and healthcare the remaining 87%. The reason for why on a total revenue basis, animal care is only 5%, but on a gross operating revenue basis, they are on 13%. The reason being is animal care is more profitable. On a revenue basis, 80% of the revenue comes from Australia and 20% comes from New Zealand. Now the industry that they operate in is expected to grow at a 13.5% CAGR through to 2026. What this means is that the business will have tailwinds going forward as the industry is expected to grow at a reasonable rate going forward into 2026. Likewise, the pet care market is expected to grow at a compounded annual growth rate of 5.9% through to 2026. Not as high as the medical industry, but still a pretty decent compounded annual growth rate. EBOS Group has a financial year end of 30th of June. So the FY20 summary results that you see over here are the results as at the 30th of June 2020. And you can see revenue is 8.8 .8 billion up a massive 26 and a half percent. Now, contrary to popular belief, this increase in revenue wasn't due to the Roni Rona. Management in their financial presentation did mention that the impact of Rona was, was largely neutral. And the reason being was that this is a well diversified business. Although there were businesses that benefited from Rona, there were other businesses within the group that didn't. And what that did was it balanced out the impact of Rona, resulting in a neutral impact. Rather, the increase in revenue was actually due to the supply of product to the chemist warehouse group. So in 2018, they announced that they won the chemist warehouse tender to supply pharmaceutical products. And this was a five year supply agreement to take effect from 1st July 2019. So essentially what that means was that because the group has a 30th of June 2020 year end, that means that this financial year had included one full year of the supply of product to the chemist warehouse and management did estimate that the chemist warehouse contract would contribute 1 billion Aussie dollars in revenue in the first year of the agreement. Now, my mom asked me to find this Asano Rosehip Facial Moisturizer Regenerating Product online. And what I found was that it was roughly $23 
at Countdown New Zealand. This is the online website. So this is Woolworths in Australia. The same type of product at the chemist warehouse was $18. So you get the same product for $5 cheaper. And that is a lot cheaper in my opinion. All right. So this is a personal finance part of the video. If you want to buy any pharmaceutical product or any skincare type of things, go to the chemist warehouse. It's probably cheaper. But what this is telling is that it does show that Chemist Warehouse is a discount retailer. And with discount retailers, they make their money not from margin, but from volume. And we can actually see this in EBOS Group's um, performance. We can see that on the healthcare side of things, underlying EBITDA margin has dropped from 3.46% to roughly 3.12%. Even though there was a large increase in underlying EBITDA, from $226.6 million in FY19 to $260 million in FY20. And that is also why we can see um, revenue increasing by 27.4% in the healthcare division, but underlying EBITDA not necessarily increasing as much as revenue did. So while they are making a lot more revenue, not all of that is captured into profitability. If you are interested in the stock, this is something to keep a close eye on to see if going forward, whether the margins will continue to be squeezed or whether EBOS Group will be able to expand their EBITDA margin. Now, looking at the strategy that EBOS Group has in terms of driving shareholder returns, they basically have a grow by acquisition strategy. All right. So if you look here, $600 million that they've invested over the five years, the majority of it goes into acquisitions and investments. As you can see here in the darker blue color, that is money spent to acquisitions and investments. The lighter blue is money going into CapEx. So CapEx usually is for reinvestment in the business. And as you can see here, only in FY18 that they spend more on CapEx than they did spend on acquisitions and investments. So this is quite telling of EBOS Group strategy that they grow by acquisitions and investments. This could be considered risky if the acquisitions don't turn out to be good acquisitions. EBOS Group in the past has raised capital to fund these acquisitions. And when you raise capital to fund acquisitions, what that does is that it increases the shares outstanding, the total number of shares outstanding. And if the acquisitions don't perform well, that could actually lead to a decrease in earnings per share. If we look here at the 10 year performance of the business, Revenue looks like it's growing at quite a high rate at 22.9%. But if you look at the numbers uh, throughout the year, you can see that most of the increase was actually due to um, the jump in revenue from 2013 to 2014. EBOS Group did mention that they actually bought shares in Symbian at an enterprise value of $1.1 billion. So this was a massive acquisition for EBOS Group at the time in 2013. So to fund this acquisition, EBOS Group did issue a lot of shares to Symbian as well as offered them cash. And the board also expected that the acquisition in Symbian would result in EPS accretion of 29.8%. Now, EPS accretion basically means that after you issue more shares, how much will your earnings per share increase by? If an acquisition is EPS accretive, that means it is worth it for shareholders to put more money into the business to fund that acquisition. If it's not EPS accretive, then it's probably a bad acquisition. And if you look at the growth from 2013 to 2014, the EPS growth was roughly 30.5%. So in other words, management was pretty close to that number here. Although, you know, the remaining 0.7% could be due to organic uh, EPS growth. Right. So this is one way that you can tell whether acquisitions have been uh, performing or whether they have turned out to be a real dud. And another place where you can also look to see if acquisitions have been doing well is to look at goodwill and whether there's been any impairment to goodwill. If the company is not performing up to budget and not up to the standards that they initially accounted for, then they will have to impair the goodwill that they initially recorded on the purchase of the business. So in this case over here, Ebos Group did not recognize any impairment to goodwill in FY 2020. So that is a good sign that their previous acquisitions have been currently doing well or doing okay and up to budget. Now that we know EBOS Group is growing through acquisitions, 
we have to take a look at how much debt that they have on their balance sheet. Because there's basically three ways that the business funds acquisitions. The first one is through cash from the operating activities of the business. Secondly is through issuing more shares. And lastly, it's also through raising more money by borrowing money from the bank and increasing their net debt position. So that is something to keep an eye out for. So over here, we can see that EBOS Group had um, an increasing net debt from 2016 to 2018. And subsequently now the net debt has decreased decreased um, in 2020. So on a net debt to EBITDA ratio, it's actually been improving for the past four years, which is a good sign for shareholders. In terms of cash on hand, they have roughly $245 million and they won't have a large chunk of their debt due until 2023. In my opinion, debt is not really an issue for EBOS Group and EBOS Group is a company that generates quite decent free cash flows as well. Looking at the valuation of the business, EBOS currently has a share price of $26.71 Aussie and this is as at the 25th of Jan. In the past five years, they have grown EPS at roughly 6.1% CAGR and assuming that net profit grows at 6.1% in FY21, we get an earnings per share of 106 cents per share. Now looking at their current share price, this means that they are trading at a forward PE of 25 times and also a forward dividend yield based on a 60% net profit after tax payout ratio of 2.4%. In my opinion, I think this is not a necessarily cheap company. After all, you are paying 25 times forward earnings for only 6.1% earnings per share growth going forward. So this company is paying 2.4% dividend, but if throughout the years they come back to shareholders asking you for more money, then that is actually quite a poor management of capital because management is paying you a dividend and then subsequently coming back and asking you for, for money to fund an acquisition. This is personally not a company that I would invest in just because valuation does look quite high and I'm not really a big fan of the acquisition strategy. There are a lot of things to like about this business, however, because this is a really defensive business in a defensive sector. And that's why I think four out of the six brokers did pick the stock. If the market continues to be volatile in 2021, then I think EBOS Group will do relatively well. Another risk that I want to highlight about EBOS Group is that by supplying the Chemist Warehouse Group, they're essentially competing against themselves. Chemist warehouse will cannibalize some of EBOS Group's uh, pharmaceutical retail sales and I don't know if that is necessarily good for the group as a whole but overall because of the chemist warehouse contract EBOS Group does seem to make a lot more profit maybe it's a financial non-event um, that there isn't really a significant impact on the business that's something I can't really wrap my head around at the moment so let me know down below what your take on this situation is I'd be really interested interested to hear your thoughts. So hope you enjoyed this video guys. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit like and subscribe. And until next time, take care.